Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio, hope everyone's well. I often say that, uh, while I'm doing these videos, I often say that there is more than one way of doing something and I sometimes get stuck not knowing which way to choose. Um, but and by the same token, if there's more than one way of doing something, then um, really you have absolute freedom to do whatever you like, don't you? Today I'm going to show you a completely, well, new idea, I think, anyway, for painting watercolour, um, which is going to help you to become looser in what you do. The idea is to free you a little bit, allow you to use your imagination and to stop worrying about painting inside the lines and so on and so forth. So if you're interested in painting loosely and just enjoying the way the paint moves on the paper and not giving a, a hoot about how it turns out, find yourself a piece of paper that isn't too precious. This here is a piece of Archie's Lavis Fidelis, which is old, and you can see that because it's somewhat yellowed. I have no idea where it came from. I, Well, I do actually. I think it came from somebody who gave up painting and they sold a whole bunch of their stuff and we bought it, and so this could be any age. Um, therefore, the, uh, what do you call it, the sizing might have diminished a bit, so it might not work the way watercolour paper should, but that doesn't matter. I don't care because this is not going to be a work of art. It's going to be a work of fun. Now, um, I usually use a limited palette and that's what I'm going to do today. And my palette, because it's Lent, is going to be limited to four colours. Always a blue, this in this case is indigo. Always a yellow, this is quinacridone gold. And a red, which is in this case alizarin crimson. Um, you don't need to choose those three colours, but I suggest that for this, the best way to start is to use three, three primaries. Um, and then as well, I'm going to have a dish of olive green there to help me out with the greens if I need it. Now I'm using my big butcher's tray here. This is a large white tray. So I've got plenty of space for mixing very loose washes. And what I've done is I've got myself four big brushes this is a, an Isabay um, wash brush here, a fairly large one, size five. This is uh, another Petit Cri. And then I've got my two um, Tintoretto brushes here from um, a Gallo, which are nice and loose. They're the, all of them are the bound type. So they have large bellies in their uh, hairs and so they will hold a lot of paint. Then I've made puddles of paint on here and I'm going to use those puddles to paint with. If I run out I can replenish them from my little dishes here. But I'm going to use one brush for blue mainly, one for green, one for yellow, one for red. So I'm going to be swapping brushes as I go along. Different way of doing it. That way you can paint very loosely with each colour. Okay, otherwise you feel kind of guilty because you're going to have to keep washing vast quantities of paint off of your brush. So we don't want to do that. Okay, so um, question is, where do we start? Well, I'm going to start with um, the idea of a plant and I'm going to drop in some green to give me a stem and I want this to be super wet. So I'm picking up a generous amount of paint with my brush and I'm tapping it to allow the paint to fall onto the paper before straightening it up a little bit. And this is experimental, totally experimental. So you have to bear with me. So then I'm going to drop in some yellow and some blue. This is 
um, indigo. And then I'm going to think about some leaves. As you do this, try not to judge yourself, you know, try not to say, oh, that's good or that's not. Just see whether you like what you're doing, you know. This is a beautiful indigo. It's um, an, an indigo from Old Holland, which is a very long established paint manufacturer in, surprisingly, Holland. So these are going to all um, blend as they sit on this paper. The sizing on the paper is fine. I'm not experiencing any problems. So I'm pretending to be a plant and I'm growing my stems. pushing up towards the sunlight. Trying to be beautiful, but not being too worried if parts of me aren't that special. If you're using a big brush like this to do the, the leaves, you can't possibly, it's impossible to be precise. So it's got to be loose. I love the way this indigo blends. With canacridone gold, which is such a fabulous colour. And then I think probably up here we might want to think about something resembling a flower. So Mix up some more gold. If you mix indigo with this uh, red, you will end up with a purple, I think. Oops, try not to do that. And just keep going, don't, uh, no need to worry. Just enjoy putting loads of water on the paper. I 
thing is not to be tied up by um, a photo or a line drawing or anything. I mean, I give away my sketches so that people can have some ideas on things that require perspective and that sort of thing, but um, you don't always want to be painting from a sketch. Although you, you do sometimes. We have some nice purple leaves here. picked up a brush with hardly any paint on it so I'm just dropping in some pink there which I didn't expect to do but that's fine and we're just filling the paper with beautiful flowers or something like that and then we're going to increase the excitement of this painting by going for some ink. This is, um, I have here, Indian ink. I don't know what make that is. A la pagode, it says. It must be French or... Anyway, Indian ink or Chinese ink, as they call it in France. Obviously, people were a bit geographically challenged in the olden days when these things got their names. Um, and then I've got a, a dip pen. This is a regular, very pointed. It's quite sharp. You could puncture yourself with that if you wanted to. Um, anyway, it holds a fair amount of ink, so it will do some quite nice lines. And then I'm just going to use the Indian ink and I'm going to come into this and I'm going to do some line to emphasise the shapes of the flowers. As it dries, it's going to run where it touches. So we'll see what happens there. I'm going to hold the pen quite near to the top so that I don't have very much control. So we end up with a, something of a wiggly line and it's always lovely where it touches the paint just goes in and gives you all sorts of interesting shading but where it's dry it doesn't do that obviously and you can't really predict and you can do texture like that you can do cross hatching if you're if you feel that way inclined and you can put the veins in using the pen for I suppose probably you want to wait until it's a little bit dry otherwise it sort of goes fuzzy Do this with any any kind of pen, um, a fine liner or a sharpie or anything, whatever you happen to have to hand. But you can definitely take your time over this. There's no rush. If you wanted to, you could wait until the whole thing was dry before you did any lines. But especially for the stalks, which are going to be, in any case, probably the darkest part. 
you might want to, to do those. I think it's possible you might want to wait a bit for the flowers to dry before you go in there with ink. And in fact, you might even consider adding some more color to give the flowers a bit more shape. Somebody asked in the comments the other day um, whether she could use her Cotman paints to paint the sorts of things that I'm doing, because I don't often talk about Cotman, but I should, because um, I said to her, yes, of course, because um, it's it's got to be true that it's better to use paint generously than to be stingy with it, and it's much easier to be generous with paint if you know that it's not going to break the bank to use it. So better to use Cotman liberally than um, something like Winsor & Newton Professional meanly. And uh, you can certainly afford to be generous with some of the student paints. They don't, um, they don't cost a fortune these days. Going to put some um, yellow into some of these centers, or where I think there might be some centers, perhaps. And then you can start to sort of identify where the flowers are with some line. When you start to do a painting like this, your best thing is to just not think, oh, I want this to be a geranium or I want this to be a, an iris or a daffodil or whatever. Just, I want to experience the color. across a quote the other day. Now, what have I done with it? Um, oh, hang on a sec. Years ago, I did a, um, a little bit, a bit of um, 
painting um, in the inspired by Rudolf Steiner, and um, some of you will have heard of him, I expect. He um, was the originator of the Waldorf schools, and um, he was very keen on art, and he said that um, the soul needs colour as its food, like the body needs physical food. So if ever you wonder why you feel the urge to paint, just remember that you're feeding your soul same way that you feed your body you have to feed your soul and one of the things it's not the only thing but one of the things that you need in order to be be content i suppose is color so that's what steiner said and i think he was right now i've got a little bit too much black up here not Quite happy with that, so I'm going to take that out and I'll put some more red in there. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then probably do a bit more inking once it's dry. But first, I want to tell you briefly about Skillshare, who are sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of great classes to choose from. The great thing about Skillshare for me is that once I've become a member, I can take as many classes as I want with no extra payment to make. My membership of Skillshare is helping me make interesting videos for my channel. The class I want to recommend this month is Organic Expressive Florals with Watercolour and Ink by Own Ma Win. And when I'm not working on the channel, I can find classes to help with my hobbies, which include knitting and crochet, sewing, upcycling furniture, cooking and writing. And you can prioritise your self-care and wellness too by using Skillshare. There really is something for everyone. There are so many reasons to join Skillshare, starting with the one month free trial you get if you use the unique link in the description below. All Skillshare classes are ad-free and there are new classes every week, plus the whole catalogue is now available with subtitles in several languages. I've put links to some of the classes I've enjoyed recently in the description below, and I encourage you to use the unique link which gives the first 1,000 viewers a whole month free on Skillshare. And now, let's get started. Okay, so this is now dry, and in the interlude we've rescued a bird that has uh, fallen into out of, well, driven into our window and um, made some silhouettes to put up because it seems like this time of the year they start getting a bit dopey. Anyway, it took him five minutes to recover and uh, he's fine, so he's off. That's the chaffinch. We get a lot of chaffinches at our bird table, which is really nice. Now I'm just going to put some centres into some of these flowers, which are dry. Um, Wherever I've kind of indicated yellow, I'm just going to do some scribbles to give some shadow and then some... I'm going to pretend that whatever these are, I don't know what they are, they're nothing, they're just imaginary flowers. You can play God when you do watercolour and pretend that... Mind you, God is much better at this than us. But anyway... Um, You know, uh, relax, let the inspiration lead you where, where it will. Don't judge yourself, don't judge anything else, don't judge anyone else. Don't listen to me. Anyway, whatever. Ramble on. Rambling Rose. And of course, oh, they could be roses. They look a little bit like roses, don't they? Um, we have a hard time making roses grow here. The climate's not particularly conducive. The only thing that grows quite well is a wild one that lives in the 
uh, the wall of the house. We can put in veins for the leaves as well. The problem with doing this kind of painting is it's so much fun putting in the lines that you could end up doing far too much. But and see how long this pen has lasted? I only dipped it once or twice and it goes on for ages. Okay, so we want to come up here and put another centre in this one. perhaps and now this is a bit drier we can put in some more detail on the petals we can sort of drag them in a little bit so they stand out more Our centers, we'll just do a few more veins on a few more leaves. At this point you might be thinking, am I going to do some spattering on this or am I going to leave it as uh, loose as it already is? You probably don't need spatter, I think you can probably get away without on this because there's loads of colours in all of these leaves, there's blues and golds and greens and mauves and so on. So we'll just, this could be a kind of fantasy poppy or red rose or something like that. So I think we're probably coming to the end of this painting here. I can hear and smell the coffee percolating away in the distance, so coffee time calls. I hope you enjoyed um, watching me have this little experimentation and I hope you give it a go. Um, you can definitely continue to do outlines on all of these leaves as much as you want. And then you can call it pen and ink. No, not pen and ink, pen and wash. Um, but the wash first and then the pen. If you did enjoy this, give me a like and subscribe to the channel, perhaps, uh, for more of these outrageous, uh, bizarre paintings that I like to do. And um, don't forget to go over to dianantone.com where we've got lots of sketches that you can download for free over there. Probably won't do a sketch of this one because this is meant to be a creative experience for you so you can just do it totally off the top of your head. But there are lots of others which need a little bit more structure and uh, so you can download those for free. We do also have a uh, membership scheme going. You can join and for 2 99 or something like that a month you can support the channel which helps us to keep going, makes it worthwhile for everyone or else you can just pop a few dollars in the tip jar on the website through PayPal if, if, um, if you're feeling like you want to 
support us a little bit, which would be great, but you don't have to, no obligation, just if you feel you want to. So there we go. I'm going to say that's done and um, hopefully, yeah, we probably could cut that up and make it into, uh, uh, what do you call them, bookmarks, couldn't you? If you didn't like it, it might look okay framed. Perhaps I'll pop it in a frame and see how it looks. So bye everybody, see you again soon. Bye for now.